So you want to start a YouTube channel, but you don't know exactly where to start. Starting a channel can definitely be intimidating. You have to think about so many different things from what type of content you're going to make, how you're going to film, what equipment you need, how to edit videos, how to talk to a camera, which is not a natural skill that any of us are born with. That's why I really wanted to create this video, a complete step-by-step -step guide to how to create your channel and set yourself up for success on this platform. We are going to break this video down into chapters, so feel free to jump to whichever section appeals to you the most or that you think will be the most helpful. We're going to go through channel setup, personal branding, planning videos, filming, editing, thumbnails, and posting. Since we are going to be covering so freaking much in this video, I'm not going to be able to go in depth about every single one of these categories. But if you guys are interested in seeing a more in-depth video about anything I talk about in this video, definitely let me know in the comments because I would love to do, you know, a whole video on my editing process, for example. One overarching piece of advice that I really want to start this video off with is while in this video, I'm going to be giving you, you know, specific tips and strategies that I've picked up in my year and a half of doing this. I can't stress enough that it is okay for your channel to just suck at the beginning. <laughs> you can listen to all of the tips videos in the world, but what's really gonna teach you how to run a successful channel is doing. You have to go through the growing pains and the learning curve yourself. For 99% of people that get started on the platform, your beginning videos aren't going to be the best and that is okay. So even though I'm going to be giving lots of hopefully helpful advice in this video, the biggest thing I can say is just do it, just go for it, and you will learn as you go. Okay, the first chapter we're gonna dive into is channel setup. Actually creating your channel is the easiest part of starting a channel. You literally just go into your YouTube account, click on your little icon in the upper right corner, and there will be an option to create a channel. You will have to choose a channel name and a handle. Handles are something that are relatively new to YouTube. It's kind of like with any other social media, like Instagram, you have at your username. Now YouTube has that too. The safest bet obviously is just to use your name. When you think about it, the majority of people who do choose more unique usernames, you know, if you think back to years ago when all of the beauty YouTubers were choosing crazy names like MacBaby11 and Steelababe09, all of those creators have since changed their usernames to just be their names, which I think is all the evidence you need that the smartest move is just to go with your name. It's going to age well. <laughs> You're probably not gonna get sick of it and it's gonna prevent you from having to go through any sort of rebrand down the line. My YouTube name, Brielle Juliet, is just my first and middle name. Your profile picture and your banner. This is something that I way overthought and spent way too much time at at the beginning. Was it just so I could procrastinate actually starting my channel and putting myself out there? probably genuinely don't overthink it. This isn't something that should be taking too much of your time at the beginning. When in doubt, go simple. That's gonna be my advice for a lot of your channel setup, just because it's easy, it looks professional. For the profile picture, I honestly just recommend using a simple selfie. You can use a photo someone else has taken of you too, but the most important thing is that you can clearly see your face. I would definitely choose a close up image and make sure that the background is not too distracting. What about creating a YouTube banner? So. This is like the big rectangular piece that sits at the top of your channel. What I did when I created my banner was just look up the dimensions. There's different dimensions for a phone, for a computer, and for a TV. You wanna make sure that your banner is going to look good on each and every one of those platforms. Make sure that when you create your banner, everything that needs to be on it is within the phone dimensions because realistically, that's how 99% of people are going to be seeing your channel. And it is such a big sign that someone is like an amateur if their banner is cut off. So. Don't do that, okay? In terms of what to actually include on your banner, I think keeping it simple, again, is the way to go. I'm gonna flash some banners that I personally like on the screen while I talk about this, just to give you guys some inspiration. Some things that I've seen that I think work really well are either just having your name slash your channel name on the banner, putting your name and then including your content pillars. This is nice, because when people come to your channel for the first time, they can get a very, very quick summary of what your channel is about, if you know your content pillars going into making your channel. I certainly did not. I don't think many people know that right away. So if you don't, like, don't worry about putting them in there. Don't stress about having the perfect bio that summarizes what your channel content is gonna be. If you don't know yet, that's totally fine. And some people also like to include like fun little cutout photos of them. That's an option as well. In terms of actually creating the banner, how are you supposed to do that? You're gonna need some sort of photo editing or layout creating software, something that you can use for your thumbnails, for things like banners and end screens, etc. It's also going to come in handy to have a software like this 
this when you start doing overlays and graphics for your videos. Personally, I use Adobe Photoshop. I'll give you some more details about that program later, but it is a paid program. If you're just starting out and you don't even know if this is something you're gonna wanna do long-term, I totally get not wanting to invest any money. So I know a free option that a lot of people enjoy is Canva. It definitely has some limitations, but it's a good place to start if you don't want to invest any money in your channel yet. There have been times where I spent hours on end just experimenting, trying to find the perfect banner. And now the one that I have is super simple, but I never get sick of it. It works, it does its job, and it allows me to actually focus on making videos. But I do think that this is a good chance for you to start just thinking about your personal branding. And that brings us into the next chapter of this video, which is personal branding. So what do I mean when I talk about branding? I mean sort of the visual language of your channel. What are the fonts you're using? What's your color palette? What do your graphics look like? This is what's gonna really help to unify everything from your channel banner to your thumbnails to your editing style. Now your personal branding is going to evolve over time. It's not something that you need to have figured out from day one. I pull a lot of inspiration from the thumbnail style and the editing of some of my favorite creators. There's no shame in that. You're naturally gonna put your own little spin and flavor on what you're drawing inspiration from. But I definitely think looking to some of your favorite creators, looking to successful creators who obviously are doing something right can be really valuable. And also just think about your taste in general. Like what do you like in interior design? What do you like in clothing? I've been a neutral ass bitch for the longest time. I love neutrals in my furniture, in my clothes, even though I'm wearing green right now, but ignore that. I've always loved neutrals. Yet for the longest time, my personal branding, my channel was an explosion of chaotic color versus now this more kind of clean neutral aesthetic that I have going on is honestly a lot more suited to my actual tastes. So my current personal branding includes a neutral color palette and three fonts that I'm currently obsessed with, which are Termina. This is from Adobe Fonts. So if you have the Adobe Suite, you can get this font as well. I like it because it's simple, but the kind of like squishness of it adds a little bit of interest, a little bit of flavor, if you will. Then we have Perfectly 90 which is obviously a 90s inspired serif font. This is a new addition to my collection. I bought it off of Creative Market. Creative Market is a great place to look for fonts once you are ready to start investing a little bit of money into your channel. And then the last font I use is Arial. She's simple, she's reliable. Also don't sleep on fonts like Arial because so many massive creators just stick to these very basic fonts. Even if you just want to use something simple like Arial or Helvetica for all your text, it can really work for you and you don't have to overcomplicate things. While I do think it's important to start kind of brainstorming about your personal branding from the beginning, it's very okay if you don't have it figured out right away. It should not stop you from starting your channel or starting to create videos. It is something that you can figure out along the way. And the beginning of your channel is an amazing time to experiment. So if you want to try out a million different fonts using colored text, using crazy graphics, Graphics. Beginning of your channel is a great freaking time to do that. So don't worry too much about having it all locked down. Allow yourself to kind of experiment, try out different aesthetics and see what really feels good and what you really like. I'm not gonna linger on this chapter too long because I actually have an entire video that I created all about my brainstorming and planning process when it comes to making videos. So I will have that linked down below if you wanna check that video out. When I started my channel, this is one area that I gave very little attention. And the reason was I just barely had enough nerve to start my channel. And I knew if I thought too much about it, if I worried too much about what type of videos I was gonna create, I was gonna chicken out. So at the beginning, my approach was very much week to week, I would get to a new week and be like, okay, what random ass video can I pull out of my butt this week? <laughs> there was absolutely no sense of strategy, of categories, of even knowing what type of content I wanted to create. And it's okay if you kind of have to start like that. If you're really nervous about starting your channel or you just feel like you genuinely have no freaking idea what you're gonna talk about or what you wanna create, by all means, just kind of 
throw yourself in the deep end. But I do think that even though I didn't quite have my content figured out at the time, I could have been a little bit more organized and intentional about my video ideas. So in order to give you a slightly more advantageous experience than I had when starting my channel, I strongly recommend putting some sort of planning process or chart or list or literally anything <laughs> into your video planning because you don't wanna just be spinning your wheels with no strategy and no intentionality. So what I did and what I recommend is starting a Notion page to keep track of all your upcoming videos. I really wish that I'd had my Notion database from the very start because I only started it a few months ago, but it has honestly changed the game for me. It allows me to map up all of the upcoming videos I have. I can see everything in this database view. And this really allows you to get kind of a wider view of your channel and start to figure out, okay, I'm seeing a lot of these types of videos. Like I'm making a lot of videos that fall into this category. And you can really start to realize a little bit more about maybe your niche or the type of videos you like to create. I also started tracking the status of my videos. This is something I just incorporated recently. So I'll mark whether a video has not been started yet or if it's in the scripting phase, the filming phase, the editing phase. This also just helps me stay a little bit more organized, especially for those of us who are starting a YouTube channel while in school, while working a job. I have a nine to five. It's really important to be organized. Otherwise you can fall through the cracks and stop uploading, which we don't wanna do. I included things like an ideas section with a running list of ideas. This is extremely helpful, especially when you have that, oh my God, I have no ideas kind of mentality. That way, if you're not feeling struck by inspiration, but you need to film a video, you have a list that you can fall back on. I think a very common thing that holds people back when they're first starting their channels is this feeling that they have nothing to talk about. This is something that I felt so strongly at the beginning of my channel, but I just wanna say you do. You don't need to wait for your lifestyle to be perfect. You don't need to wait for your apartment to be perfect clean and aesthetic. You don't have to wait for your life to get more exciting. You don't have to wait for anything. You can start where you are right now and I promise you have more material for videos than you think you do. Definitely if you're struggling for ideas, it is okay to just kind of talk about anything and everything at the beginning. A good jumping off point is to think about what are your experiences. It doesn't have to be something that just happened. It can be something from years ago. My first video on this channel was about the fact that I got a nose job at 16 years old. I made that video when I was probably 21. I was talking about something from five years ago, but it was an experience from my life that I thought would make a good video. And so I utilized it. Also think about just like what topics interest you? What do you like to hear other people talk about? What type of videos do you like to consume on the platform? Do you love vlogs? Do you love video essays? Is that something you think you could potentially want to make? Definitely don't be afraid to experiment. Even though down the line, it might become a little bit more important for your channel to have a bit of a more cohesive vision. I'd say at the beginning, experiment all you want. You might love watching vlogs and think that that's what you wanna do is create vlogs. You might film a vlog and be like, fuck, I hate this. I hate having to get all these little shots. I hate having to share so much of my day. I really just wanna create like sit down talking videos. You won't know until you try and the content that you like to watch, while it can be great inspiration, might not necessarily be the content you like to make. So allow yourself the room to experiment and do some trial and error. Like I said, I have an entire video on the brainstorming and planning process. So I definitely recommend checking out that video if you want more tips. But to just quickly summarize some of the points I made in that video, I really recommend brainstorming possible playlists and using them as jumping off points. So if one of your favorite creators has a productivity playlist on their channel and you're like, oh, I love productivity. I would love to make videos around that. Maybe you decide productivity is gonna be one of the playlists on your channel. This can be a great starting point for coming up with video ideas. Cause now you're not just trying to come up with an idea out of the void. You have a category to jump off of. Create reoccurring series that you can consistently fall back on. I've done this for myself with my Girl Talk series and my monthly resets. These are videos that I make every single month. So it takes away a little bit of the thinking process. And the last little piece of advice for coming up with content ideas is to think about your categories. Are you a student? Can you make studying vlogs? Are you a writer? Can you make content around that? Are you working a nine to five? Do you wanna create workday vlogs? No matter where you are in your life, what stage, what category you fit into, chances are there's an audience for it. So think about that when you're coming up with your video concepts. All right, it's time for the good stuff. Let's talk about filming your first video. Filming, let's freaking talk about it. I'm so serious about this category that I'm standing. 
No, it's actually just because I need to get every last bit of sunlight out of this window right here. <laughs> All right, the elephant in the room, the question I feel like everyone has, the thing that so many people use as their excuse for not starting their channel, filming gear and equipment. If you're starting out, you can and should use your phone to film. However, if you're going to use your phone, I know it can be tempting to use your little front camera and go like this so that you can see yourself while you're recording. Do not do this for several reasons. One, you are not a trained YouTuber yet, so your eyes are instantly going to wanna watch yourself instead of the camera, which is not a good viewer experience. I am still 100% guilty of doing this very often. <laughs> it is hard not to look at the viewfinder, but your audience will be able to tell if you're looking over there versus looking at the camera. And on your phone, it's even worse because the camera is this fucking tiny and it's a lot easier just to look at the screen and look at yourself. So you don't wanna use the front camera for that reason, but also the quality is just night and day better when you use your back camera. So I definitely recommend starting out with an iPhone when you're first getting started, just cause it lowers the barrier of entry. You probably don't wanna be investing money into your channel before you've even made your first video. I totally get it. However, using an iPhone has a lot of weaknesses. The quality is not the best, and especially the audio quality is not the best. The mic on a phone is just not really strong, so unless you're literally talking into it, it's going to be a little quiet and just not be the best audio. So what I strongly recommend and what I wish I had done because I made, I don't even know, like fucking 60 something videos with just my phone and no attachments, which I deeply regret deeply, deeply regret. I strongly recommend getting a little mic that just plugs into your phone. I've heard people have great success with this. It's just gonna help up your audio quality the tiniest bit without having to make much of an investment. Also, phones don't have a viewfinder. If you're using your back camera, you're not gonna be able to see yourself. And while that could be good in terms of you not looking at yourself in the viewfinder, it also can be a real freaking pain in the butt. Not knowing whether you're in the frame, not knowing whether you're even recording, I can't even tell you how frustrating that is while you're trying to film your with no help. Like it's really difficult to film yourself without some sort of viewfinder. So even though I do think that a phone is decent to start, I would still say try and upgrade as soon as you possibly can. So if you're curious what gear I use, I use the Sony ZV-1. It's a relatively affordable, very small and convenient camera. I'm a big fan of it so far. It's easy to use. It has this product showcase feature that lets you kind of hold products up to the camera and it'll do that, which is very convenient. I feel like this camera was really created with YouTubers in mind, which is really nice and it's easy to use and easy to customize. In terms of audio, I use the Rode Video Micro. This is a very cheap microphone as far as microphones go. You do have to adjust the audio recording level. Mine is currently set at 18. I've played with it quite a bit to try and figure out like the perfect loudness for my audio. I also have two tripods that I love and use one larger, taller tripod that my camera is currently on right now. I'll have it linked below, obviously. And then I also have a mini tripod. This is my cute little mini tripod. It is a Manfrotto little guy. Just goes like this. This is convenient for vlogging. Hold it with the legs in. <laughs> and that's my preferred method if I wanna like hold the camera for a shot. Okay, I wanna give you guys a couple filming tips, little things that you can implement to make your videos a little more interesting, a little more visually nice to watch. Number one, B-roll is your best freaking friend. If you wanna grow your channel, one of the things you really need to focus on is your audience retention. So basically keeping your viewers watching for as long as possible. And you do this by making your video very interesting, very engaging. And there's a few ways you can do this, but two big ways is either through your editing or through your filming styles. So changing up your shots, having B-roll overlay over your talking portions, etc. So for example, if we look at the intro of this video, I included clips of me sitting down at my computer editing, a clip of me setting up my camera to film a video, little things like this just to add some visual interest to the video. Since I've been doing this, especially in my last couple videos, I feel like I've really seen my audience retention go up and stay up because I do feel like I've been incorporating some more visual interest. I'll also frequently include things like a montage of me making coffee. Just these little kind of quick cut segments that break up the longer talking portions of my videos. I think this is especially important 
if a lot of your content is more sit down chatty type videos, you want to still maintain some sense of visual interest and incorporating things like B-roll or like a coffee making montage is a very easy way to do that. You can also just switch setups in the middle of your video. Like I've been switching my camera angle and the part of my apartment that I'm filming in between every single chapter of this video, just to kind of keep things a little bit more interesting, make sure my background is changing up and everything doesn't look exactly the same during the entire video. And the last tip is a classic that was rammed into my brain when I went to film school and it is show, don't tell. Meaning instead of saying, okay, now I'm gonna go to coffee. Hey guys, I'm back from coffee. Now I'm gonna go edit a video. Okay, I just edited the video. Don't do that. <laughs> Instead, actually show you getting your coffee, actually show you editing the video. Let's talk a little bit about camera confidence, how to be more comfortable in front of your camera. This is something that really does develop with time and I still struggle with this. I still feel incredibly awkward. I especially have noticed that I feel I'm the most awkward in my intros. So something I'm trying to do a little bit more is talking, even if it's about the most random things before my intro, you know, talking to myself while I'm like getting ready to film, for example just kind of brushes the cobwebs off of my vocal cords <laughs> so that when I start a video and I'm all, hey guys, welcome back, it doesn't sound too forced or fake because it's the first thing I've said out loud all day. You know what I mean? Just kind of warm yourself up if you have to like maybe talk about a different topic for like three minutes in front of your camera and then swiftly move into being like, hey guys, and start your intro. That might be helpful as well. Just kind of warm yourself up to talking to the camera. Another thing that I think is very important is to not be afraid to emote. I feel like a lot of beginners are very stiff and very serious and there's even been times where I'm watching my own footage back and I'm like girl smile like express something because especially if you are talking about maybe a more serious topic it can be really easy to go into this mode where you're just like okay hi today we're going to be talking about blah 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 I'm gonna explain blah no one wants to watch that no one wants to watch that you're way better off trying to be as natural and conversational as possible I feel like I'm frequently smiling I'm not afraid to bring out a little bit of personality. That's really gonna help to keep your viewers engaged too and make them form a little bit more of a personal connection with you. The more true to your actual personality that you can be, the better your video is gonna turn out because if you're acting super fake, like putting on a fake sense of humor because you feel like you have to or put on a fake like peppy persona, which I can be guilty of sometimes. I have to constantly remind myself like, okay, let's, let's tone back the fake peppiness. Let's be a little bit more genuine, a little more casual because that shit does read through the camera the absolute best thing that you can do is just to be as true to your real life personality as possible. Talking with your hands. Some people might find it annoying, but I find it engaging. I love talking with my hands in videos. Really get into the conversational flow with the camera. I also think that something that helps with this is not having a word by word script because you're gonna come across way too robotic. It's okay to have an outline. Like I outline all my videos. I actually went pretty in depth with my outline for this video. Can you see? Yeah, I have quite the outline for this video. But I'm not saying it word by word. I'm noticing the general topics that I'm talking about and I'm letting it flow out of me in a conversational manner because that's what's engaging. But give yourself time and give yourself patience because talking to a camera is not natural. <laughs> and especially if you've never done it before, you're gonna be very awkward and very uncomfortable. It will come with time. It'll start to feel a little bit less weird and a little more natural. I think I've officially sucked every last ounce of sunlight out of today. <laughs> so I'm gonna pick this video up some other day and we'll dive into the editing process, which is one of my favorite parts of creating content. And I've also gotten quite a few compliments on my editing style, especially recently, so. It is in fact a new day. In fact, it's a week later. I think editing is such an important part of YouTube. It's what's gonna take up the vast majority of your time. I wanna time myself to know how long it actually takes me to edit, but especially if you're doing like kind of more elaborate things, like having a lot of graphics and text and things popping up on the screen, which I do recommend because it's great for keeping your audience engaged, but that does add time to your editing process and it's gonna take you hours. Obviously, different creators have different editing styles. Definitely look and see what you like from other creators. Lots of amazing creators can get away with just like very simple editing 
where all they're doing is cutting together the shots. They're not really adding any text or anything like that. That is a strategy and that will definitely save you time in the editing process. But I think especially as a newer creator where people don't really know you yet and people aren't attached to you yet, it might be a good idea to kind of try and keep people's interest a little bit more with some more elaborate editing. So let's chat editing software. I think when you're just getting started, iMovie is a great freaking choice. I believe it comes free with any Mac computer. It definitely does have its limitations. The biggest one that I've heard of is that apparently you can only have one overlay layer, meaning if you wanna have like text pop up on the screen, you can do that, but you can't have text on top of an image on top of your footage, if that makes sense. Like you can't do like more than one thing layered on top of your footage, which I feel like is limiting if you are doing a little bit more elaborate editing. But if you plan on starting off with a little bit more of a simple editing style, I think iMovie will do well for you. Also, something that I really like about iMovie that I myself have used is the color grading in iMovie. When I used to film all my videos on my phone, I would actually put my footage into iMovie, do all of my color grading in iMovie, and then move the footage over to Premiere Pro. So I think the color grading in iMovie is a strong perk of using that software. In terms of what I personally use, like I said, I personally use Premiere Pro. I have had the entire Adobe Creative Suite since college, I believe. So I was all set. When I started creating YouTube videos, I just started using Premiere Pro, Photoshop, basically the programs I was already used to using in Adobe. I really recommend the Adobe Suite. I feel like it's a great one-stop shop for everything that you're gonna need, but it is a little bit more on the expensive side. If you wanna get the entire Adobe Suite, which includes Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Lightroom, etc., all very valuable programs for creating a YouTube channel, you're gonna have to pay $54.99 per month. I know that's very steep, so if you wanna just get an individual program like just Premiere Pro, say you're happy with doing your thumbnails and your graphics in Canva, but you want to upgrade your editing software, you can get Premiere Pro for $20.99 a month. And if you're a student, I believe you can actually get the entire Adobe Creative Suite for $19.99 a month, which is a great deal. So if you're a student, I 100% suggest taking advantage of that amazing deal because it's more than 50% off of the regular price. All right, so let's get into some editing tips. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I think an entire video on my editing process might be coming in the future where I actually like sit down on my computer, go through the process of what I do to edit. But for now, let's just go through some tips. Biggest piece of advice that I have to make your editing process a whole lot easier, faster, and more organized is to create an editing toolkit for yourself. This should include sound effects, music, graphics, things that you can use on repeat so that you don't have to start from scratch every single time you're editing a video. This will also help your videos have a bit of a more cohesive feel because you're pulling from the same libraries. I feel like it just creates this sense of familiarity and style to your videos that makes you stand out a little bit and be a little more unique. Make a stockpile, create folders for each of these categories, and then you'll have this kind of toolkit to go to. So some examples of things that are in my personal editing toolkit, in terms of graphics, I repeatedly use the little Instagram tag pop-up when I'm like introducing myself at the beginning of a video. I have a subscribe graphic that I'll throw in sometimes towards the beginning of a video. I love using this like moving paper background. This is something that has become like an obsession of mine. I love it so much. I'll use this when I wanna show like a screenshot or a photo or a video or basically anything that I want to pop up. I'll usually use this as the background. I've also started using these like little clear tape graphics to kind of put on the corners of whatever's popping up. I also love using like little sketched arrows. And recently when I wanna show something as being like on my phone, I'll use this like phone sketch graphic and then put my screen recording into it. And it's just a cute little way to show something on your phone. In terms of sound effects, I've been loving using this beep sound effect when I'm changing in between scenes and especially at the beginning of my videos. It kind of feels like your recording is starting. It's got a cute kind of like early 2000s feel to it, like pressing record on an older camera. And then I also really like using a click sound effect. I've gone through many clicks <laughs> in my time. This is the current one that I'm really liking. And then I also use a typing sound effect if I wanna have text appear letter by letter. So where do you find these things? Obviously the internet is your best friend. There is so much free material out there to find like my overlays literally just go to Google search like doodle arrow transparent PNG or aesthetic computer transparent GIF you want to include transparent because that's gonna make your life a lot easier if whatever graphic it is is already on a transparent background you can also remove the background yourself this is pretty easy to do in Photoshop with like just the magic eraser tool I'm not sure if this is a possibility with Canva I think you might need like Canva Pro to remove your backgrounds 
Another great place to get overlays and to get sound effects is if you literally go onto YouTube and you search up like aesthetic YouTube video overlays or trendy YouTube sound effects. There's lots of videos that will pop up that have sound effects, graphics, etc., that you can use. The overlays will often have a green screen and depending what video editing software you're using to make your videos, there should be some sort of feature that will help you get rid of that green screen background. I know in Premiere Pro, I think it's called Ultra Key, but that can be a really good place to look for things like subscribe button graphics graphics, anything with like animation that would be kind of too complicated to make yourself. And they also have great trendy sound effects. This is where I originally got all of the sound effects I was using on my videos. Now I've also gotten some sound effects off of Epidemic Sound. I also heard a sound effect that I really liked in one of my favorite creators videos. So I literally downloaded that video and like tried to get the sound effect isolated. So that's a good hack too. If you love a certain sound effect that someone uses, I personally love using text when editing my videos. It's such a simple way to add a bit more interest to your video. There's so many different ways to use it as well. You can use text to introduce a new part of your video, a new section of what you're talking about or a new topic. You can also use text to accentuate what you're saying. So having text appear with every word that you say, if you're making like an important point or if you're like reading out a quote or something, especially if you're like reading something from your phone and you're not looking at the camera, that clip is gonna be super freaking boring to watch. So I especially like to use like popping up text when I'm doing that. Another great way to use text is to add like a little extra comment or context to something you're showing on screen. I think this is especially valuable like when you're vlogging or you're showing yourself doing something and there's no talking involved. When you have text pop up, it's a way to kind of comment on what you're doing and also to give the viewer a little extra something to process. I've gone so back and forth with leaving my videos completely uncolored or like having too strong of a color edit where where I feel like it looks wrong. I finally feel like I've landed on an editing style that I like for now. Subject to change, of course. But basically I found a LUT that I really like. LUTs are really cool because it's basically just a filter for your videos. It takes a lot of the manual work and guessing out of trying to color grade your videos. So LUTs are a good place to start if you don't really understand anything about color or color grading, but you kind of want your video to have a little bit of a, a bit of a look to it, a bit of a more aesthetic, easy to watch kind of feel. So the LUT that I really like is called Brooklyn. I think it came with a larger LUT pack that I downloaded. It was definitely free. So I will find the link and put it in the description. If you like the way that the color on my video looks, I'll lower like the strength of the LUT to like 40%. Luckily Premiere lets you do this, which I'm grateful for because the full LUT at like 100% is just way too much in my opinion. But I like that it gives it a slightly more like vintage cinematic feel. So I'll apply this filter and then I will do some adjustments. I typically will shift the white balance. I will just base it off of the footage itself, whether it looks too warm, too cool. Sometimes footage will look too green. It really depends shot to shot. So I'll manually adjust this for each clip. And then sometimes I'll make some other alterations to the other levels in the little color column. <laughs> I can't think of the right words right now. Just to give you a quick before and after, here's a clip with absolutely no color grading to it. And then this is with the color grading. If I do an editing video in the future, I will walk you through exactly how I do all that, but that is generally my color grading process. How about freaking music? So for my music, I use Epidemic Sound. It's actually pretty affordable. It's only $9 per month. So I have an Epidemic Sound subscription. They have a huge library and you don't need to give credits or anything in the description of your videos, which is really nice. I always have a link to sign up to Epidemic Sound in my description. And I do believe you can get a free 30 day trial if you go to that link. So I'll have links for a lot of the services and gear that I mentioned in this video. Down in the description, there are affiliate links. So if you wanna help me out and you're interested in anything I talk about in this video, definitely be sure to check them out. Little shameless promo. <laughs> if you don't wanna spend any money when you're getting started, which again, I totally understand, a great free alternative for music is Thematic. I use Thematic for months on my channel. And what's really cool is that even though they do have a paid subscription option, they also have a free version that has a pretty decent library of songs that you can download. The only thing that you have to do in order to use them is credit the songs in your description. I know a lot of people when they're starting out their channel, they're like, oh, just go onto YouTube and search royalty-free songs. I honestly would say don't do that. I had a few videos towards the beginning of my channel when I was just searching up royalty-free music 
on YouTube get a copyright strike because sometimes those videos that are claiming to be royalty free really aren't. And I just don't think it's worth the risk because in the future, if you do wanna get monetized and eventually make money off of your videos, I just don't think it's worth risking having videos get demonetized because the music wasn't actually royalty free. So I would recommend just using thematic if you want free music. Also, I think it's so important and a very common beginner mistake to not have your music too loud, especially when you're like talking, if you're doing a talking clip, you really want the music to fall very far into the background. I put music in the back of all of my talking clips. So I have to be very careful that the music is at a low level so it's not overpowering. And also that the songs I choose are chill and simple enough where they're not distracting away from the clip. I made this mistake at the beginning of my channel. My music was way too loud. You could barely freaking hear me. And especially if you are starting out with kind of a cheaper setup, like filming on your phone, for example, your audio is already gonna be kind of quiet and difficult to hear. So the last thing you wanna do is have super loud music fighting for the viewer's attention. So I like to keep my music at the negative 36 decibel line and below. So it'll be peaking at negative 36. That's like perfect for me. And that requires substantially dropping down the audio level of my music. Even if you have like a section of b-roll or vlogging clips with music yes the music can be louder than on like a talking clip but you want to make sure that overall the audio levels of your video is pretty consistent so where you're talking is peaking on a talking clip and where your music is peaking on a like vlogging clip should be about the same it can be such a pain in the ass if every time a video switches from talking to music you have to like quickly go to lower the volume on your phone because it's so much louder. So just make sure that all of your audio is at like a very consistent level overall. I also think that it's important to keep in mind where you're putting this music when you're selecting it. Like, like I said, for like a talking clip like this, it's really important that the music is not overly distracting. So I think going with something that's a little more jazzy, typically no words on the slower side is a good move. You don't want something like with a really crazy hectic beat or way too many like elaborate instruments. You really want something simple that's just gonna create this very nice chill vibe under your clip. Versus for like a vlogging clip, you can choose something a little bit more fun. Maybe something with words or from a different genre. Epidemic Sound has like little categories slash descriptions under each of their songs. I recommend looking for songs that have descriptions like dreamy, laid back, relaxing. Those are the ones that I repeatedly download and find work really well. My favorite genre to use is actually alternative hip hop. So if you're looking for a place to start when searching for songs on Epidemic Sound, that's what I would recommend. Holy fuck, that was a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a boba and we're gonna talk about thumbnails. I've been trying to find the angle that I want to use for this clip for so fucking long. Is this what we really want to go with though? All right, we're committing. Okay, I have homemade boba and we're gonna talk about thumbnails, which is honestly potentially the most important part of your video. And it's too often the most neglected part of your video because here's the tea. Your video can be fucking flawless, but if the thumbnail sucks and nobody clicks on it, it doesn't matter. And that's why I find thumbnails kind of stressful because I feel like my video's performance is riding on the thumbnail a lot. It's really what's gonna get people to click on your video. And again, if you're spending hours editing your content, if you're spending hours in front of the camera, you should be paying attention to your thumbnails because otherwise you're putting all of that hard work to waste. Like I mentioned previously, I make all of my thumbnails in Photoshop. You can get Photoshop with the Adobe Suite or you can get it individually for $20.99 a month. So what should your thumbnails look like? This kind of goes back to what we were talking about with personal branding. I feel like now there's difference between my thumbnails, but they all belong to the same family. And that's what I think you should really be striving for is like an overall cohesive vibe with still some differentiation because you don't want all of your videos to look exactly the same. So typically to get my thumbnails, I will just pose at the end of recording or at the beginning of recording, do a few poses, screenshot the video, and then edit that into my thumbnail. Yes, you get a slight loss of quality from using a screenshot, but thumbnails are usually seen so small anyways that I really don't think it matters. <laughs> Sometimes for my more like vlog videos, I will just take a screenshot of me in action instead of posing. As a general rule, you want to be kind of bigger in the frame. People like clicking on thumbnails with people's faces prominent. They wanna see whose video they're clicking. Something I've been playing around with a little bit more recently is actually taking photos for the purpose of a thumbnail. So instead of just posing while filming, actually going out to take a photo or doing a separate setup to get a specific photo that I want for the thumbnail. Specifically, I'm thinking of my Stop Attaching Your Self Worth to Your Success video, which did pretty well for me. I know Lynette Adkins has talked about how doing that really helped 
helped her channel when she was growing. And I really pulled inspiration from that and kind of tried to replicate a similar vibe. You don't wanna get in that trap of all of your thumbnails looking the same. So doing some differentiation, whether that's having a thumbnail that's a bit of a further back photo or a thumbnail where there's two cutouts of you. That worked really well for my December reset. In terms of the actual style of your thumbnails, how to edit them, how to like create something from this photo that you're using, I don't feel like there's one right answer. There's lots of different thumbnail styles that can work. For example, some people like to do a little bit more of a decorative style with lots of doodles and handwritten text that can be really popular, especially with more like lifestyle type channels. Another style that I feel like is pretty foolproof is just having a really great photo and then very simple, bold text. This is something that I feel like is popular amongst a lot of bigger creators, especially. Someone that comes to mind is my fam. I really love her thumbnails. It's extremely simple. It's typically just a photo slash screenshot of the video with bold white Arial text, but I think it looks amazing. I think Arial or a similar font is such a good safe option for creating thumbnails. It's probably not something you're gonna regret. <laughs> it's very clickable, it's bold, it's easy to read. I recommend sticking to white text. What I've found is that white text just looks simple. It looks clean. There's a reason why like 90% of YouTubers are using primarily white text. It just looks good. I would suggest trying to keep your like big text or your main text to just a few words, ideally like two to five words. And I also recommend playing with size. It can be really eye-catching to have really big text. For example, for my Girl Talk videos, it's two very short words, right? So I really like blowing them up and making them like a huge part of the thumbnail. Also my closet clean out video that I did, which is the most successful video on my channel. I think that thumbnail worked so well because it had two very prominent words on the thumbnail. There was like a clean photo and it just had bold text. And I feel like it was just chef's kiss. <laughs> I feel like that was a, a top tier thumbnail. I really suggest playing with size variation. So having bigger text, but then including smaller bits of text to maybe highlight what's in the video. So going back to my Girl Talk series example, I have the big text for Girl Talk, but then I have little bits of text saying like the topics I'm covering in the video. I like doing this because I feel like it gives the viewer a little bit more of a sense of what they're signing up for if they click on the video. I think this can be really useful, especially for videos where you are talking about more than one topic. When you're posing for your thumbnail or taking pictures for your thumbnail, it's good to already have an idea of maybe what graphics or what text you wanna put on the thumbnail and where you're gonna put it so that you can already account for that when you're taking your thumbnail photo. So for example, if I was about to pose for a thumbnail and I knew I wanted text across the top, I would make sure that I was a little lower. Obviously I would actually adjust the tripod. Don't do what I'm doing now. You don't wanna be looking like this. But I would make sure there was actually space above me for the text. It's gonna make your life a lot easier when you go to actually create your thumbnails. If you've already thought about where you're placing things and taking the photo with that in consideration. I kind of already touched on this, but I think the biggest piece of advice is to just put thought into your thumbnails. It can be so easy to get lazy, to be continuously doing the same thing for every single video, and to just kind of save your thumbnails as something you do last minute when you have to post. Oh, I need a thumbnail. Let me quickly do something in 10 minutes. Simple thumbnails can absolutely work and sometimes they're the best route to go, but put in the time and effort to make your thumbnail good. If it's gonna be simple, make sure that the photo is really captivating and the text is bold and attention grabbing. And even if you are just using a simple kind of photo of you like this, you can add things like graphics to make your thumbnail a little more interesting. For example, my November reset, it was a very simple photo of me just holding my coffee and smiling, but I added a little screenshot from my November goals page that made things a little bit more interesting and added some spice. Let's use the last tiny little bit of sunlight that I have to talk about actually posting your videos, posting on your channel, doing the damn thing. <laughs> know this video is like fucking an hour long. If you've stuck around, um, thank you. Okay, so let's talk about actually posting to your channel. You've edited your video, you're ready to post it to the internet. There's a few things that you gotta do. Obviously, you need a title and description. I'm not gonna go into detail about this because I've already talked about it in past videos, specifically my, my first year on YouTube video and my how I brainstorm my content video. I talked about this in both, but you wanna do some keyword research. I use TubeBuddy, it's a free app. I'll have a link in the description. But basically it lets you look up different keywords, see how they're gonna rank in search, let you see how much competition there is for that keyword. Great tool for figuring out what keywords to include in your title and description. Huge piece of advice, it's great to include tons of keywords, sure, but especially with your title, you still want it to be appealing to humans. So don't just stuff a shit ton of keywords into your title, make sure that at 
least the beginning of your title is more focused on grabbing people's attention, being interesting. Cause it doesn't matter if you're ranking in search if no one wants to click on your video. Sorry, I feel like I was a little um, crooked. Maybe this will give us some more light. Oh no. <laughs> Absolutely not. And then you also wanna add any links into your description. So this can be like affiliate links. Obviously this isn't the most relevant when you're starting out because you probably don't have enough of an audience to really make money from affiliates. Plus a lot of affiliate programs require you to already have a following in order to even let you get an affiliate link. However, Amazon's affiliate program allows you to pretty much sign up with no following. So I recommend doing that and then you can just start leaving Amazon links in all your descriptions. In terms of posting frequency, I think it's really important to commit either to a posting schedule or just a posting frequency when you get started because otherwise it's gonna be very easy for you to just fall off. I recommend posting at least once a week, twice a week if you can manage it. It depends how much free time you have, right? If you have a job or you're in school, twice a week is gonna be tough. You might need to start off with once a week. I personally am still only doing once a week because I don't have the bandwidth to post twice a week and I'd rather be consistent at once a week than burn out trying to do twice a week. So be realistic with yourself about what you can handle. I suggest either choosing posting days if you think that's gonna help keep you accountable, so like committing to every Tuesday, or if you wanna grant yourself a little more flexibility, just set a rule for yourself that you're gonna post once a week and make sure that you don't go more than like seven days without putting a video up. That's what I did at the beginning and I feel like it worked pretty well. This is something that I wish I did, but I would recommend having a few videos done and ready to go before you start posting on your channel. So have like three videos stockpiled before you post your first one. It's gonna make your life a whole lot easier if you start yourself off being ahead because if you're constantly having to finish videos last freaking minute before they have to go up, you're gonna be stressed out as hell and you're way more likely to burn out, fall off the horse, etc. The last thing that I wanna say about posting is if you're scared to put out your first video, please, please remember that as long as you're not like promoing your channel or sending the link out to your family and friends, chances are no one's gonna even know <laughs> that you started a channel, okay? It's not gonna magically pop up on the home page of every single person you've ever met. I feel like I had that idea in my head. It's not like TikTok, okay? TikTok is evil in the sense that it will randomly push out your videos to people that it knows you know. But YouTube, especially at the beginning when your videos aren't really getting pushed out, no one's gonna fucking know. And by the time they find out, it's probably gonna be because your channel's popping off. And at that point, it won't be embarrassing anymore. So don't let the opinions of others or fear about people finding out keep you from posting because chances are no one's gonna know. And even if they find out, they'll probably think about it for like two seconds and then move on with their lives. Everyone else is so in their own bubble and so focused on themselves that people really don't care that much about what you're doing. So just go for it. There's so many positive potential benefits from starting your channel that far outweigh people maybe judging you for two seconds. That is it for this video. I feel like this is the most elaborate and just like intense video I've ever made. If you made it all the way to the end, I hope you got a ton of value from this video. I really tried to pack as much advice and tips as I could into this video. I wish you guys the best of freaking luck with starting your channel. Definitely let me know in the comments where you are currently with your YouTube journey. Bye guys, love you.